And we actually have someone who is probably, and I'm being very serious, one of the most respected men in all of Canada. Uh, he's the chief of staff over at the Trillium, uh, Tr Trillium Hospitals. Uh, his name is Dr. Gopal Batnagar. I get it? You did absolutely, Todd. Thank you very I, much. I did okay. Yeah. I did all right, Todd. Let's, let's see if I can live up to your uh, expectations, though. How about how about how about G? Can I just call yeah, you G? Absolutely, G. Yeah, we'll, make, yeah. we'll make it easy. No, yeah, do, uh, yeah, uh, Doctor G, Doctor Gopal. Uh, Doctor G is good. Doctor G is good. And with our friend, a recurring friend from the show, uh, a guy who has truly helped us uh, immensely because we met him at the Gentlemen's Expo back in November. Jay Brody had a smoking problem. The whole goal of the new year, everyone has these resolutions. Everyone wants to take care of themselves. Everyone always says they're going to do stuff, but never really do anything about it. All of a sudden, we managed this guy's expectations. He went on vapemoshi.com. He hasn't had a cigarette now in two months, and we're so proud of the guy. Amazing. It's well unbelievable. Done, well done. Well and this is a legit story, and that's why we want to thank Beiju, the founder, who also was once a smoker and now doesn't smoke, of vapemoshi.com. How you doing, my man? Todd, I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm happy to hear that Jay is still holding strong and doing well. And today we brought some backup, uh, have a little more uh, conversation about vaping. Yeah, I, I, this is wild because um, Dr. Gopal, of course, uh, Chief of Staff at Trillium, um, how long have you been doing heart surgery for? Oh, uh, Todd, uh, yeah, probably just over, around 25 years now, been uh, doing opening hearts and trying to fix them up as best we can. It, it really is an amazing, an amazing story. And you've um, brought in some really new types of ways to do procedures, have you not? Well, we... Uh, you know, we do a lot of this beating heart surgery. We're one of the leading centers in Canada uh, doing that. That means being able to operate on the heart without using the heart-lung machine. You can you can still do a vast majority of number of operations without stopping the heart. So that less blood transfusions, better outcome for patients, and that's really what it's all about. My goodness, and, and you must have seen some some very tragic situations, but obviously you've saved thousands of lives, and, and kudos to you, man. I have so much respect for doctors, and I'm being very serious. You know, That's we have a fun show, and we always juvenile here, but it's, uh, it's an amazing, and you're extremely intelligent, man. Some of the things you see with the heart, heart yeah. defects, and, and obviously your years and years and years of mm -hmm. practice are generally, you know, and uh, maybe I shouldn't generalize, but yeah. are caused from smoking. Is that correct as yeah. well? 80% uh, of all heart disease is caused by some sort of lifestyle problem. You know, uh, and the, what I've seen, and we know now it's coming up more and more that even more important than cholesterol is uh, the risk of tobacco smoking. You know, so that's like number one. And it's, it's preventable. You know, so as I said, the, you burn tobacco, really bad stuff comes out of it into your body. And, and what, is it, what are the effects on the heart from tobacco? Sure. So the effects on the heart are, are almost immediate. Your heart rate will go up. Uh, your actually arteries in your uh, bloodstream kind of go into spasm. So the blood flow to your heart decreases. You can actually measure with an ultrasound and see the heart muscle function decline as people are, are smoking. Uh, it releases a whole bunch of chemicals into your bloodstream that causes inflammation in the heart, damages the inside of the, uh, the heart arteries, uh, as well as arteries in, in the whole body everywhere. You know. Are there seemingly healthy-looking individuals? Uh, they work out and they ride their bikes. Uh, you know, they, they have that strong jawline I've always wanted. <laughs> and I have to grow a goatee to cover up my, my kind of double chin here. Uh, and, but that actually internally, uh, because they're smoking, because they're not taking care of themselves, uh, actually, you know, they, they have terrible hearts. They just don't know it. Is, is, there, is there that confusion yeah, uh, sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, if you're smoking uh, and you're smoking tobacco, you can look fit, you can look great, uh, but it, the damage is you're kind of rotting on the inside. And, and uh, how young of patients will you work on? I do only adult surgery, so you know, under 18, we'll go down to sick kids. That's usually problems with kids that are born with a, a mm -hmm. problem with their heart congenital, you know. Uh, the youngest person I've ever done a coronary bypass on would be about age 23. Whoa. A coronary bypass. Holy. Yeah. And, and, and define that for some of our listeners okay, who don't sure. know what that is, you know, including me. Okay. okay. Well, that's no. where the, the, yeah. well, <laughs> the, that's when the uh, kind of arteries are blocked. So it's, yeah. it's human plumbing. So we'll take vein from people's legs, different arteries from parts of the body, basically open up an artery, kind of stitch it together, and then put the other end somewhere else to basically go around a blockage. Imagine if your, your pipe got blocked in your kitchen. Rather than unblock the pipe, we would just build another pipe around it. Okay, so, so liquid that, drain, not a good solution for this. Unfortunately, stuff. you know, if, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's kind of the holy grail. If somebody can invent liquid drain for the human arteries, man, it's, I'd be, I'd be retired. I'd be doing this, I'd be doing this uh, radio station from my estate in the Bahamas. You know? <laughs> hey, by the way, Doctor G, I'm sure you're already having an estate in the Bahamas. Okay, I, I'm sure you're doing all right. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, well, I you deserve everything. I can't complain. I can't uh, and, complain. And, and you know what, though, doctors deserve every single that's penny they get, and it should never be capped ever. Uh, you're saving lives. Uh, uh, you know that's my statement there.
there. So now when it comes to smoking, and, and now there's new craze over the last few years, vapemoshi.com, e-cigs, all these different things with vaporizing, you're actually an advocate for this stuff because it's harm reducing. And, and you're seeing it now for people who quit smoking, they have healthier hearts. Uh, speak to this a little, if you don't mind. Well, you know, I, I knew nothing about e-cigarettes or this uh, the vaping three years ago. And actually, when I started reading about it, I was actually quite negative because, I mean, my initial reaction when you heard the term cigarette is very negative. But I said, let's keep an open mind about it. I spent about nine months doing the research on it before I kind of, you know, became a, a proponent of it. And I'm, my, my opinion is based on the science uh, of it. Uh, we know that uh, when, people, when you introduce an electronic cigarettes into a smoking population, the people, they drop their cigarette smoking, cigarette consumption at least 50%. Okay. And we know that the risk of cancer, heart disease, everything like that is dependent on how many cigarettes you smoke. So even if you don't quit completely, I mean, my hope is that people will use it to quit completely. But even if you don't, we know that you can reduce the harm being done to the human body uh, by them. Uh, so the, the research uh, on that, and there were some randomized trials that were done. One was published in The Lancet uh, where they compared what doctors typically recommend, you know, the patches in the gums, to the new electronic cigarette. And they were actually pretty equal in helping people quit smoking. And at the end of six months, there was less relapse in the people that used an electronic cigarette product. So for me, the science became quite compelling. When you actually analyze the chemistry in the vapor, you know, which is a simple chemistry experiment, you don't find anything that's really you know, even potentially dangerous. You know, people argue that, well, we don't know what's gonna happen in 20 years. Although part of that is true, I know very certainly what's gonna happen in 20 years if you continue to smoke cigarettes. So, you know, let's compare the difference between smoking cigarettes, which is like, you know, in the stratosphere, to smoking electronic cigarettes, which is, you know, the dangers like at ground, ground level. It's, it, you know, coming from your mouth, obviously doing what you do, being a, a surgeon, a cardiac surgeon, and being the chief of staff at Trillium, I would imagine that there are a lot of people going, wow, we're hearing it right from, uh, you know, this expert, uh, this guy who understands what it takes to save lives. But then you must have people who are like, um, Doctor, uh, Dr. Gopal, uh, you should not be saying this stuff. Are there a lot of people fighting you too on this stuff? No, he said the, the science of it is, I'm happy to debate the science of it with, with anybody, you know, and I'm happy to always learn myself. I mean, I learned about this, and I'm always keeping track of the data, the science of it, pros and negatives. The issue really now is, is that, you know, if, uh, and we were talking about this out in the green room, is that if you think it's harmful, like, uh, you know, people say, what's well, a gateway to kids? to start smoking cigarettes. Okay, well, that, that may be a fundamental concern, but then you go mm. out and you do the research, and then w the research has actually been done. There's a huge study uh, of about uh, 12,000 individuals out of the UK that shows that in a market where e-cigarettes are very easy to get for kids and anybody, that only 0.22% of uh, vapors are actually youth. If you're not a smoker, this product really doesn't appeal to you, so that, that whole concern yeah really it, the data doesn't support it. It's legitimate to have a concern, but I don't think that it, it's kind of a, you know, it's not the right thing to then just ignore the data because it doesn't kind of meet your, meet your idea. Well, and the gateway argument I hate, and the gateway for children to start smoking. And I, I'm only t doing this on, on a humility level, on a person who just is a layman and understands you had the peer pressure growing up in high school. You saw your boys smoking. You thought it was cool. You had a cigarette. And next thing you know, you were smoking a little bit more because it's a little bit addicting and all this kind of stuff. And then hopefully you have the wherewithal to realize you're damaging the yeah. fuck out of yourself. Yeah. So stop this. Uh, and, you know, with, with, with Vape Moshi, with e-cigs, whatever, you know, that data of you harming yourself is not the same data as it is with smoking. So even if there is an 18-year-old out there who grabs an e-cigarette or grabs a vape moshi, it's like, well, wouldn't you rather them do that? Wouldn't you rather them then go back to that if smoking came from it? If that makes sense, you know, like yeah. a, a, every cigarette hurts the human body. One cigarette hurts a human body. Is that not true? Well, we know, I mean, I couldn't really say that. Yeah. Is that we know that, I mean, I tried cigarettes when I was a kid. Yeah. I hated, hated them, gave me a headache, I gave it up. I don't think I permanently damaged my health. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, we know, again, looking at the data, in everywhere that e-cigarettes have become popular, smoking rates have actually gone down. Wow. So if the idea was that cigarette, you know, e-cigarettes are a gateway to kids smoke, why are we not seeing kids smoking more? In fact, we're not. We're seeing them smoke less. And the kids that are using electronic cigarettes are the ones that were smoking tobacco. They're not supposed to be able to get tobacco, but yet somehow kids do. You know, the... Uh, I'm not advocating, you know, sort of youth smoking. I mean, no, I think that, not at all. But you know, unfortunately, they find their way. They find their way. 
So, you know, the the public health messages that we're doing, they're bang on. You know, we need to make sure that kids understand it's dangerous, that everybody's dangerous. We don't want to make it look cool again. And I think that message is out there. But that message has run its course. You know, you can't make, I mean, everybody knows they're bad for you. People who are smoking know it's bad for you, but they can't get off it. So we just can't ignore the practical realities of trying to, you know, of getting rid of burning tobacco in our society. I personally found the whole, um, the whole, flavored uh, flavored e-vape or e-juice uh, comparison and how that's a gateway it's absurd because I'm, I'm in the I'm in the liquor store not too long ago looking at right. flavored liqueurs and flavored liquors and watermelon vodkas and and candy cane rum and all this crazy stuff <laughs> but like, it's the truth though there's a million different flavors now of liquor and no one's saying well that's going to get kids to drink because it's properly regulated in a store and taxed yeah. Uh, you know, so I, it was one of the things. It's such an absurd argument, and I think it's being used and propagated completely in the wrong way because it's just not the case. Well, and you're a great case study right now, G. Yeah. Brody. We're hanging out with Dr. Gopal Batnagar and Abeju Lakani, of course, from vapemoshi.com. Uh, and I find this stuff so intriguing. Listen, I smoke one or two cigarettes maybe a month. Mm -hmm. And even now, I don't do that because I just got a, I, I just got a vapemoshi.com. It's fun. Like, just for that one time, I'm, I'm yeah. maybe drunk and I would go and have a cigarette. I just pull this thing out of my pocket, and mm -hmm. I know it's like a better option for me. But Jay, to me, is a hardcore smoker, a guy who worked construction for years and years and years, and that's kind of what you do on your breaks, and I think it's an excuse just to take a break. You couldn't uh, take a break unless you were smoking. Yeah. The guys would yell at you, like, hey, go back to work, you don't smoke, go, go. Yeah. That's how it was when I started, right? So, And, and honestly, though, you're feeling better, and you've you've wound down uh, quite well from this product. Yeah, I, I've you know, I don't smoke anymore. I, I use the, the Vape Moshi e-juices with with the e-cig I have, and it's just, it's been wonderful, it's easy, um, but you know, there's still a lot of, uh, unfortunate, there's a lot of oppo opposition from all ends based, you know, about this stuff, and it's kind of, it just, the, the further I get away from smoking, the more crazy all the opposition seems, because a month ago I was fucking, two months ago, I was, gonna die smoking cigarettes smelling like shit driving around like <laughs> like a dick and now i feel healthier i can take bigger breaths and i'm worried that this is gonna start uh you know i every time i open the paper there's a there's a new study showing how beneficial it is and then uh, you know a, i saw a, a great study law. on cnn the other day uh, right. say, saying how we, we you know we posted on our facebook page yeah. on, on how this stuff is good but i mean i just think it, let the person decide you know, if it's good for them, then that's the way I think we should do this. Uh, Dr. Gopal, your experience now with people who go on this stuff, like, I, you know, you, you might have someone who had a heart surgery and they still need to smoke. They are helping themselves, are they not? At the end of the day, if they get off smoking but need some sort of nicotine intake, are they, are they helping them? Is that fair to say? Are they helping themselves? The number one thing is getting off burning tobacco. Okay. Uh, once they've done that, the nicotine itself, you know, I mean, we could do a whole show just on nicotine yeah. itself. It's uh, as a isolated from tobacco, it's not as addictive as people might think. You know, is it, and you can all argue, well, you know, if you're using something that's relatively harmless, then who cares if you're addicted uh, to it or not? We were talking out in the green room. I have people so addicted to running that they're burning out hip replacements, Interesting. but they won't stop running. I mean, they're addicted to running. We would say, well, that's great. You know, they're so healthy, but they're running on artificial hips and, you know, Isn't they're going wild? through that. So we all have, we've all got some weakness, personal weakness and addiction. But if just from a medical viewpoint and from society's viewpoint, what we want is people are not getting cancer, they're not getting heart disease, not getting emphysema. That is not only costing human misery, but look, I mean, half of all our tax money goes to health care. Okay? You get people off burning tobacco that's more money for, you know, welfare projects, for housing, for infrastructure. I mean, we're struggling to control health care costs. And I think this, is, could, you know, this could be a significant role in helping release money over the next couple of decades back out of health care. I mean, there's, there's a potential for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, the harm, you know, just to go back to the science of it, because that's why, that's what convinced uh, me to uh, uh, to be in there. There's actually a very interesting new study uh, that uh, showed, because one of the concerns is, well, what happens to people standing around you know, the vapors? Uh, and uh, a really great study done just very recently shows that 99.9% .9 of the vapor is uh, vaporized polyglycol, uh, which we is an ingredient in children's Tylenol, which we administer all the time. It's all over the place. Water, and the concentration of nicotine in the air is 0.06%. Okay? It's roughly about the same amount of nicotine you're going to get if you ate uh, two tablespoons of eggplant. 
Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I understand nicotine is created in plants to prevent the bugs from eating their roots. Yeah. And so eggplant, I mean, it just have, it's a high concentration of tobacco, obviously, but eggplants, root vegetables, they all have a certain amount of nicotine in them. So, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to put that into perspective for people who say, well, it's danger to bystanders. You can argue that, you know, if you're vaping, well, that's kind of your own choice. But you don't want to be puffing out stuff that might be potentially harmful. Dr. Farsalinos, who just published this research, shows that the, you know, any kind of cancer-causing agents, like hydrocarbons, stuff like that, is the same as people breathing air. So if you're standing beside somebody is vaping, you can be very confident now that there's nothing harmful coming out to you. Okay? Is there harm to the person that's taking it? It's debatable, yep. it's, but it's going to be incrementally, like so far below smoking uh, tobacco that even if there is something, it's going to be 99 plus percent safer. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. Beju, Beju, do you have anything to add from baitmoshi.com? Yeah, I mean, when we were talking about the, the gateway issue and just about who should be using these products, it kind of got me thinking about it. And I, I just want to make sure that it's very clear from the business perspective. Look, we don't, we have no desire yeah. for non-smokers to be picking up these products, right? There, there's no interest on, on my part. I mean, there are a billion smokers on the planet today. <laughs> Do you know what it means for our business if even 10% of those people look at this product legitimately as a way to get off tobacco? Right? We don't need non-smokers. And frankly, I, I think that if you're out there and you know, you're thinking about vaping or smoking, don't do either. Breathe air. It's better. Right? At the end of the day, that's your best option. So stick to it. And you know, if you're a smoker, um, you know, take a long look at this. Yeah, because your whole goal, and we've talked about this, you've been on the show now four times, was you went through this. You're living, you also, you're not one of these case studies. You smoked way too much. You were in a bad place. You said, you know what, I got to change my life. And that's helped for you. Right, of course. I mean, I, I, honestly, my, my story is just like Jay's, right? Uh, you know, I just, it was a couple years ahead, but what made it work was um, just just a gradual progression to vaping over smoking. It's just like, just like uh, Dr. Batagar just said, right? It was, it was not an immediate turning off of of smoking and switching to vaping, it was gradual, and over time, I quit completely, and I absolutely feel better because of it. And that's why that's why I started the company. You never smoked an eggplant. You never just lit up an eggplant yeah. to, you know, <laughs> to get the next. Do you remember that? Remember that Simpsons episode, the tobacco, whatever it was. The tobacco, yeah. 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 Okay. tomato and tobacco combined. <laughs> Beautiful tobacco. It's uh, coming out next month from Babemochi.com. <laughs> uh, <right. laughs> well, great stuff. I mean, listen. The only thing we try and do here is educate our listeners. Absolutely. We try and make them laugh, and we try and educate them, and we try and put a smile on their face. And we try and say, you know, what? we walked away with something today that maybe will help us, whether it's inspiring them to do music or whether it's inspiring them to get off cigarettes. And, you know, having a pro such as yourself, Dr. Gopal, I can tell you, really goes a long way. So I can't thank you enough for your time. Uh, you are an expert in what you do. Is there a way that people can get a hold of you if they truly have some more questions? Yeah, you know, I'm uh, I, I, I'm a neophyte on the social media, but uh, I'm uh, my Twitter thing is at Dr. Gopal. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, I'm learning about that. I also... Uh, I also found out uh, t uh, that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, sh you know, it should, it, if you're sending a message on Twitter, shouldn't it be a twit? But I understand, no, it's a tweet. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Yeah. I'm, I'm old, but I'm I learning. Know. You know? And uh, uh, absolutely. So they can, they can get a hold of me on there, you know, between operations. I'm happy to try and respond uh, to things. Uh, I just want to commend you, Todd, on taking, a, you know, taking time out and doing some, you know, giving me the opportunity, getting uh, a socially relevant and, you know, healthcare information out to your listeners. It goes a long way because there's, uh, you, know, you have no vested interest. Uh, in this uh, yourself, except uh, improving the health of your listeners. And I'm, you know, it's a pleasure to be here and help. You know, the one thing that I don't understand is I really don't understand it. And this is a guy who smokes one cigarette a month, probably. And I still do the odd time. I'm being very honest. I'm, I, I'm like full transparency. My emotions are all on my sleeve. It's disgusting. And I, and I, I like, I have this resentful feeling. It's like when I used to masturbate when I didn't realize it's okay for us to do that kind of stuff. I'm being serious. But now, but I know it is so bad for you. And the second you get older in life, and I'm talking to you 22 year olds right, right now who think you're invincible. The second you start to age, and it's so sad, you don't want to, but the second you do, and you start to realize that people go through these things, lung cancer and stuff, and you see the suffering that comes from it, heart disease, all this stuff, stop now. Start living your lives better because you know what? These are your prime years, man. And I'm talking to you 25-year-olds to, you know, 40, 45-year-olds. Live it healthy because you want to be healthier down the road as well. And all this stuff legitimizes it. And I don't know if it's good or if it's bad or whatever. The only thing I know is that smoking is shit. And I know that for sure. 
Guaranteed. And, and I think that's what it comes down to. And I'm proud of Brody. Yeah, just Absolutely. just to add one quick thing, as, as like a former heavy smoker, I always thought like there would be not like I tried the gums, the sprays. I'm spraying gum in my mouth. I'm <laughs> putting spraying stuff in a humidifier, <laughs> wearing the stickers and the tattoos, and eating the stamps and whatever the hell they gave me to to get off. And I and nothing worked. Nothing even came close to working. And then the first time I tried uh, the vape mo, she was just like, "Oh shit, there it is!" Like it was just like an aha moment where I was like, "Okay, this works." And it was no looking back after that. So I'm thankful for for um, for them. For he's lost five pounds in a month and a half. Well, it has nothing to do with that. No, it does. I think <laughs> you're eating. You're, you're, you're eating, and <laughs> you find people's taste improves. Yeah. You know, their their coughing uh, goes away. And because you actually have that ritual behavior, what you call it, you know, what you're saying is that ritualistic behavior of that oral mouth, that kind of yeah. thing, that actually prevents people from doing the other thing that what happens to people that stop smoking is eating. Oh, oh interesting. interesting. So most people, yeah. when they stop smoking, will gain 15 to 20 pounds because there are chemicals in tobacco that cause you to, you know, that are appetite suppressants. But ah. also, you have nothing to do with your hands and your hands and your mouth. And uh, so it, it, it fills that gap. And that's what I find so compelling is that it fills the gap. You know, if everybody, you know, unfortunately you have people that say, oh, it's a dirty, disgusting habit. People should just like quit, give up. Uh, you know, just, you just got to be strong-willed. I was quite frankly, you know, I'll admit one of those people that says, look, why don't they just quit? But the more, as a physician, I've got to stand back and, you know, I got to say, well, people need help. How can we help them? Where can we help them? And so if we need to approach it, we need to approach smokers uh, people who are smoking with a little more empathy. You can't just write off 15% of your society uh, and and forget about them. And I think that vaping has come out because the medical community and you know other uh, other people have kind of written off smokers and said, you know, uh, un unless we can make money out of you from from taxes and selling you drugs, that's all you're good for. You know, maybe that's a strong statement, but the more I I see that we've got maybe. Still, fifteen percent of our population smokes. Wow! Okay? I mean, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Half of those people are going to try and quit this year. Exactly. Good you know? stuff. And, and and you have a nice little community now. This you know this this vaping community. I, I you know it's neat to see this little supportive community as well because yeah. most of them are former smokers and all they share these common stories, which is basically living a healthier life. Yeah. And that's the best part, I think, about it. Well, listen, uh, uh, Beju, thank you very much from VapeMoshi.com. Uh, Dr. Gopal uh, B Batnagar, please, uh, anytime you want to come back on oh, the program, kind of you. any studies you have, anything you would like to talk about, I know you're an advocate of this stuff. And more importantly, man, I know you're just an awesome uh, cardiac surgeon, and, and you, you save lives. And, and at the end of the day, uh, I've never saved a life. Jay Brody, have you? Uh, 14 times, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a hero, guys. I'm a hero. Listen, if, if some of your listeners actually use this opportunity to get off yeah. uh, cigarettes, you have. Well, and, and maybe that's our little part that we can do. And it's yeah, the same thing, absolutely. you know. So uh, we all try and do our part, and that's the most important thing. That's what evolution is, friends. Thank you again for hanging out with us here on Canada Last Channel 168.